All right, we're going to start with the fishes. And fishes is the correct term when we're talking about the plural for many different species of fish. If we're talking about one species, then the plural would be fish. Let's start with class chondrichthys. These are the shark skates, rays, ratfish, and uh, most of these are going to be marine. They have paired appendages as opposed to our uh, class Agnatha, which did not have paired appendages. So we have paired fins in this case. And they have biting mouth parts. And remember, class Agnatha uh, were the jawless fishes with no jaws. So now we have the evolution of uh, biting mouth parts, which makes them more efficient eaters. And we have the placoid scales. And I'll show you an image of those momentarily. And the cartilaginous skeleton. We have a calcium skeleton. And the uh, class chondrichthys is all made of cartilage. And we can see an image of the placoid scales. And if you look down the center of each of these scales, you'll see this keel, or this edge. And that gives the scales a more hydrodynamic shape, makes them much more efficient in the water. And these scales give the shark kind of a sandpaper feel to them. And there are plenty of fish that will come up to the sharks and scratch up against them, use that sandpaper quality to scrape parasites off of them. And you can see those keels, and those keels help reduce uh, friction, make them more hydrodynamic. This keel. And hydro being water. And one of the things that most people learn about sharks in grade school is that they replace their teeth. Each of these teeth are actually a modified scale. And they do uh, replace those, those teeth. Most of them are going to be replaced when they are young, where they're replacing them every week. And then as they age, then they're up to a couple of weeks old. They replace them as they fall out when they, uh, when they bite a prey item or as they, uh, as they get worn out. There are different sh sizes of sharks. We've got the squalus shark, which is less than a meter up to a whale shark, that being the largest of sharks, that's more than 10 meters long. Now here you see the whale shark next to a diver. There are a couple of whale sharks in captivity. They're in the Atlanta Aquarium. Then we have the skates and the rays in this uh, class, chondrichthys. These live in shallow water and tend to eat invertebrates that they find along there. And the stingray has that modified placoid scale that forms that spine. Um, the crocodile hunter was killed by the venomous spine, but that's kind of a freak accident and doesn't happen very often. But that is also a modified scale. And they have uh, the pectoral fins modified into wing-like appendages so they glide through the water. Again, another design to make them more hydrodynamic. And the beautiful manta ray. And electric rays uh, do actually produce an electric current. All living things are giving off a certain amount of an electric current, but in the rays they actually can use this electric uh, current to detect their prey and also to startle predators. And so they can give a 250 uh, volt jolt to something. Think about a 9 volt battery. You know, uh, many of us put our tongues on those when we were kids and that gives you a little tingle. So just imagine how much 250 volts is. Alright, I'd like you to take your coloring sheet 
and uh, color in some parts of our, our shark. Let's start with the fins. I would like you to identify the dorsal fin, the pectoral fins, pelvic fins, and the caudal fin, which we tend to call the tail fin. Each of these is going to help the uh, shark while it swims. Some of the internal features that I would like you to, to color in is I would like you to color the uh, digestive system. So we'll start with the uh, mouth and color through the intestines, the stomach, and the uh, cloaca. And then cloaca is where they will remove uh, their waste product. It's also an area for uh, reproducing. Now some parts that aren't exactly part of the digestive system but aid in digestion. We've got the liver which produces some enzymes as well as convert uh, nutrients into uh, fats and uh, carbohydrates. We also have the kidneys for removal of nitrogenous waste. Past the kidneys of the uh, marine animals versus the land animals. I'd also like you to identify the brain. And we talked more about the brain and how it functions. And compared those, uh, the brain from the different uh, classes. Let's also identify the heart. And we will be dissecting a, uh, a heart shortly, and we'll compare and contrast the hearts from the different classes of uh, vertebrates. All right, I'd like you to think about the characteristics that make a chordate a chordate. We've got a dorsal nerve cord. So I would like you to locate that on your on your coloring sheet. And we have the notochord, which is made of cartilage. We have a notochord on here. And also the gill slits. Here are our spherical openings. So color each of those and uh, be able to identify them. Now the sharks can sense their prey with a number of different senses. They do use their smell. In some of the studies, they have plugged up uh, the nasal cavity, and the uh, sharks had a lot more trouble finding their prey. So they do use their sense of smell, and that's one of the things we tend to know about sharks, is that they're able to detect a small amount of blood within the water for miles. 
but they also do use some of their sight. However, when it comes to actually capturing the prey, uh, they'll use their sight to get close, but then use some of their other senses for fine-tuning that capture. They also use sound waves, and in this case you're going to uh, be able to see the lateral line here along this uh, shark. And I would like you to find that on your uh, chondrichthyes sheet. That lateral line is a, an area with lots of pores, and within those pores are these sensory cells. They're much like our ears, where they have a little hair that uh, that moves with the vibration, and they're able to tell in which direction that motion is coming from. And they use those sound waves to uh, to identify and uh, capture their prey. They also use an electromagnetic field, and we're going to talk about that a little more. The electromagnetic field is used to uh, locate the prey, and in some cases they're using an electromagnetic field to stun the prey and to uh, capture their food. I'd like you to find your coloring sheet on uh, on the gills of your shark. And I'd like you to identify some of the structures. I'd like you to find the gill arch. And your image is a little different from this one. I'd like you to uh, identify the flow of water versus the flow of uh, blood within those gills. So you can see that they're in opposition to each other. And this allows them to efficiently draw the oxygen out of the uh, water capillaries. We have the lamella. The gill filaments. So that oxygen rich water is going to pass over and the blood flow is in the opposite direction. And that's going to allow for extraction of the oxygen throughout the entire movement of the water. So identify each of those uh, portions of the gills.